Hey everybody, this is uh, Commissioner Robert Patrick, and uh, we are having a uh, stormwater town hall meeting. Um, I'll say that when my staff and I uh, talked about a date for this uh, earlier uh, in April, we had no idea that the weather would coincide um, perfectly or terribly uh, with our uh, uh, with our event. But um, as fate would have it, you know, we've had two solid days, almost three solid days of some pretty strong, pretty severe weather that um, sort of calls attention to the stormwater issues that we're facing right now. Um, and tonight I have uh, invited uh, Mr. Uh, Rick Lemke. He is the public works director for DeKalb County. Um, and you know, from my career as a staff person, as well as time as a Doraville councilman, um, I bring a lot of knowledge to the table, but I also acknowledge that when you have a professional on board as your staff, Sometimes it's best to let them explain sort of the background and the environment that we're in right now. And that's sort of my uh, expectation for Mr. Lemke tonight to give us a brief rundown on sort of the, the perspective of stormwater from his department. Um, and then we'll have a question and answer for him after that. Uh, and uh, I'm sure everyone is sort of knowledgeable of how to use Zoom. So enter your questions into the chat uh, throughout the day. Actually, throughout the week, we've been receiving emailed questions. And so we'll also put some of those questions to Mr. Lemke uh, for tonight and try and answer any questions that you have. Uh, and I guess without saying much more, Mr. Lemke, if I could turn the floor over to you uh, with just a, a preface of saying that in the few times that we've spoken already, I've been impressed with your knowledge. I believe you have over 45 years of experience uh, working in public works or as a contractor uh, in public works type projects. And so I think you are, uh, eminently qualified for the position you hold, as well as for um, the information you're about to give us. So uh, with that, I'll turn it over to you. All right, well, well, thank you, Commissioner. I sure appreciate it. Um, uh, yeah, I've been in the business for uh, quite a while. When I started, I had hair. Um, but um, it's just one of those things that uh, happens with the, uh, you know, as time goes on. Uh, what I thought I'd do is set up, uh, and I set up a little bit of a PowerPoint presentation that I think has a, a fair amount of information in it, probably too much. I will try to go through it pretty quick, uh, quickly. I, um, I'll, I'll share my screen so you can see the PowerPoint as it comes up. And I'm hoping that that will at least provide explanation of a little bit of where we're at, what we do, why we do it, and, uh, and we can go from there. Um, you know, as I'll, I'll try and make it uh, as, as brief as I can without being too short and too brief. And then uh, uh, I've got pad and paper here to, to uh, you know, take questions and, and stuff like that. Um, the one thing I will say is that, you know, as I preface this whole thing is um, if you're looking for every question and every issue to be answered tomorrow, uh, you're going to be out of luck. It's not going to happen that quick. You know, we've got a lot of complex problems and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not an easy solution, and I'm probably going to be telling you things you may not want to hear, but, you know, that's, that's kind of the way I roll. I'm, I'm not going to make promises that I can't keep, and, and I made a career out of being somewhat of a straight shooter that, um, you know, I'm going to say, you know, tell it like it is. And uh, some of that's good news, some of that's bad news, but that's the way it goes. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and um, share my screen. Uh, providing I can find it. There we go. And we'll go ahead with, with uh, you know, this is a, a bit of a presentation and, and hopefully, hopefully it'll be informative. Um, as Commissioner said, you know, we're, we're meeting, we're going to talk about stormwater issues um, and, and essentially where we are. Uh, we are not unlike any other agency, public agency in the area or for that matter, throughout the nation. Um, you know, like any other um, community, you know, our infrastructure is in critical need of repair. You know, obviously, that even on a nationwide level, you know, you know, uh, if you've been watching the news, you know that President Biden has been proposing a, a trillion dollar um, uh, plan to address infrastructure needs throughout America. And uh, DeKalb County is, is not exempt from any of that. Um, we have currently a backlog of work orders. And typically what happens when we get uh, someone call uh, with a complaint, whether it be uh, um, stormwater or anything else for that matter, 
Um, we end up uh, sending an inspector out to take a look at it, and I'll explain a little bit about that later. Uh, and if work is generated or if work is uh, deemed to be needed, we'll develop a work order. And as you can see in that second bullet, you know, we currently have a backlog and it's a sizable backlog that has developed over years um, of uh, work orders that uh, we you know, are still trying to get to. Uh, 600 of those are identified as being high priority. And you know, when you consider the size of this county, that's, that's fairly significant that uh, you know, those are critical elements that you know, we're concerned about. We have a lot of infrastructure to take care of. The county owned infrastructure needs a lot of repair work, but there's also a lot of instances of privately owned storm sewer systems that clog or crumble. And you know that, that infrastructure has the same amount of problems that we do in the public system. And to give you an idea of size, you know, that last bullet there shows you know, some of our inventory, these you know, more than 25,000 catch basins, 900 lineal feet of drainage ditches, uh, 940, a little bit over that actually, of uh, detention or retention ponds to be maintained, over 3 million uh, feet of storm drain lines or pipes, and 180 dams and bridges uh, that we are responsible for maintenance. Now, a lot of the questions that come up is, you know, how, how do we get this uh, resolved with public or private? You know, I'm talking about new maintaining public systems, but I'm also mentioning uh, private. And essentially what it boils down to is DeKalb County maintains publicly owned storm sewer system components. We call them the MS4, which is Municipal Separate Storm Sewer System. And I'll qualify that even a little bit more for those who are not familiar. The storm sewer system is separate from the sanitary sewer system. A sanitary sewer system is the system that takes care of the you know, toilet waste, your drains from um, you know, from your sinks and, and whatnot throughout your house. And those are called sanitary sewers. And those are within the purview of the watershed department for DeKalb County. Uh, the Public Works Department is responsible for the storm sewer system, which is completely separate, and that's drainage, rainwater, and things like that. But we're responsible for the publicly owned storm sewer system, um, and that's you know drainage. And, and we know that there are drainage systems, pipes, channel streams that are not contained within a public easement or within public right of way, or that are privately owned, and those are to be maintained by the property owner. Um, and that's often a difficult process to figure out exactly which is public and which is public or, or private. It's not a cut and dried issue. It's not necessarily simple for us to make those determinations if someone calls and tells us that they have a problem uh, in a, uh, a sinkhole that developed for a, perhaps in their backyard, maybe from a collapsed storm sewer pipe. Um, you know, we need to determine whether or not that pipe is a county facility or if it was installed by a developer and never deeded to the county, never transmitted to the county, and thus becomes a private issue. In order to determine that, quite often we have to go to the subdivision plats, do some legal research to find out you know, what we can and can't do. The reason that that is important uh, is that it is frankly illegal for us to be spending public money for a private system. Um, that would be a, a misuse of public funds, and it's something that we're very sensitive to. So it is something that we tend to be a little bit careful on when we review it. So anytime we have a complaint or an issue that comes up, those are reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis. So I can't really give you any hard and fast rules on how to define what's public and what's private. But as far as all the problems that we have, you know, how did we get here? Um, and it's, it's not unlike any other um, agency you know, we were developed from a, a rural situation into a suburban community, uh, suburban uh, county. Um, that development occurred, you know, way back 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. You know, even all the way up into the 80s, we found that stormwater systems were not a regulated entity. Uh, and that's not unusual either. Um, unfortunately, you know, that happens uh, in many parts of the country. Uh, DeKalb County is one of them. When uh, development occurred, Stormwater was kind of a nuisance, and if there was a natural drainage path, typically the developer would just allow that drainage path to continue. If he happened to build a road over it, he might throw a culvert under the road so that the water could get from one side of the road to the other, and we'll maintain that culvert 
but the rest of the drainage uh, path has never been dedicated to anybody and is generally used, uh, considered to be private. Besides that, the cab has unfortunately deferred maintenance on systems, and I've got it listed there as cleaning ad hoc. It's basically on an as needed basis when a complaint comes in or as an issue arises, instead of actually having a schedule maintenance or a may, uh, a specific and, and formal maintenance program. And then as you saw in the previous slide, you know, the, just the size of our inventory makes producing a scheduled maintenance pretty difficult. And, and again, you know, the age of the system, the type of materials that we have within the system uh, um, is, is such that we're reaching the end of its life cycle. Uh, there's an awful lot of corrugated metal pipe through in, uh, throughout the system. The life expectancy, design life expectancy of a corrugated metal pipe, depending on soil conditions, ranges anywhere from like five to 30 years. Well, we, we've got pipes in, in the county that are way over 30 years, you know, 50, 60, 70 years old. And as they deteriorate, they rust out and they tend to collapse. Um, now, what we're doing about it, um, you know, this is a problem that, that we know, you know, if we've been trying to address it, especially over the last uh, several years that we've identified it as being a critical issue. Uh, trying to make uh, system maintenance and restoration a priority for the county, which it has not been in previous years. Um, so in order to do that, we're trying to expand existing contractual services um, to allow contractors to do more work. Um, we do have some sympathy. We're not completely cold to the idea of uh, private system uh, problems uh, that the city or the county does have a, uh, what we call a citizen drainage program, you know, wherein the county will uh, under if it if if it meets the criteria, uh, donate up to twenty five hundred dollars in value of either rock for uh, erosion control, riprap, or for pipe materials uh, to uh, you know put in a ditch. Um, however, you know, our restriction is that we can only deliver such materials. We cannot install it. That still falls under the responsibility of a homeowner to do that. Uh, nonetheless, it's at least a step in the in the right direction to provide some assistance to those facilities and those residents who have facilities within their uh, properties. Um, the, the, the backlog of work orders that we have typically fall within three major areas, you know, pipe repair, cave-ins, ponds, clogged systems. Um, those repairs uh, are our primary focus rather, uh, at the current time because we have such a big backlog. And essentially what they boil down to in cave-ins and pipe repairs, these are probably the most important ones because if we left them unattended, they tend to get worse and, and more expensive. Uh, the county had a couple of on-call contractors to assist with that over the years. One contractor concentrated just on uh, 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 replacement repair. Another one was a pipe lining contractor, uh, slip lining. That's a specialized repair technique where they literally put a sleeve inside a deteriorated pipe. Um, and as a result, you don't need to dig it up. Uh, it restores the structural integrity of the pipe um, and uh, enables us to do a lot more work without having to uh, do a lot of disruption and traffic and whatnot as we dig things up. However, uh, you know, as we have recognized that we've got a growing backlog of, of, of needs, you know, we've added a third uh, on-call contractor to do that kind of work. When it comes to ponds, uh, I indicated we have over 940 detention and retention ponds, um, and only one pond painting crew that uh, exists within our current workforce. Um, you know, obviously, that's not enough. And we have ponds that have gone 10, 15 years without anybody doing any maintenance on them instead of being a grass field that percolates water into the ground. You know, there's trees and, and sizable trees. So we do have some issues to take care of. Well, we recognize that as well. And in the last two years, we developed a, a, a new contract, new um, maintenance criteria, uh, put that out on the street and now have six contractors that are able to uh, assist us with pond maintenance. And our goal is to get to a point where we can do, you know, at least once a year maintenance on these ponds. And the problem we have now is many of these ponds are so overgrown that it takes an incredible amount of effort and energy to bring them back up to the standard that they should be. So it's going to take some time uh, for us to get through that and uh, be able to get to all of these ponds uh, in a timely fashion. 
the clog systems and lid repairs, uh, about 35% of our backlog we have estimated is uh, falls into this category. These are the pipes that are blocked by uh, debris. Uh, we use a, a vacuum truck to uh, suck that debris out of the pipe and, and clear it. We've added contractors to be able to assist us with that. Uh, the lid repairs, things like a broken lid on the top of a uh, of an inlet, um, to be very blunt, are are low priority items. You know, unless they are a safety issue, you know, we might uh, try to safe them up a little bit. But uh, the complete replacement, considering all the other problems that we have throughout the county, quite often those things lag behind uh, for quite a, uh, quite an extensive amount of time. COVID nineteen is. Um, you know, obviously everybody's been impacted by that. I mean, here we are, we're having a virtual town hall meeting, um, you know, instead of in, per uh, in person. And it has impacted roads and drainage significantly, uh, as well as it has everybody else. We ended up making some fairly decent uh, advances in our backlog, trying to wipe out a lot of those numbers uh, in 2019. And we were starting to uh, make some success in it. We were budgeted at... Um, about $14 million that we have coming in off of the stormwater utility. We actually spent upwards of 20 million um, uh, utilizing some of the fund balance that was in that fund uh, to try and start catching up with the problems that we have. But in 2019, um, we had uh, reduced our staff, uh, had to reduce it to avoid the spread of the virus. Uh, and we ended up, instead of having a workforce of 218 people in roads and drainage out on the streets, we were down to 49. Uh, obviously, we weren't able to do routine maintenance. Our responses were limited only to emergencies and critical needs. Uh, and that uh, started back in April of 2020. And only now are we starting to be able to ramp back up to a full force. And some of that was you know, uh, dictated uh, to us that you know, we need to keep our crews sidelined to uh, prevent the spread of the disease. And some of that uh, was simply that, you know, if you've got a crew of eight or 10 people and one of those people comes in contact with uh, someone who is confirmed with COVID, we end up having to quarantine the whole crew because we can't afford to have the entire crew come down sick and uh, perhaps even, you know, drastic measures beyond that uh, that we have had you know, some, some deaths as a result. So it's, uh, it is a serious issue and it certainly impacted our ability to continue to perform. In order to try and keep up with it, we ended up utilizing more contractual services instead of our in-house services. But those contracts, uh, contractors were constrained by the same things that we were constrained with. And they still are. We've got uh, several contractors who are telling us that they're not yet up to full speed. So what do we do from here? The next steps, um, you know, we need to develop a strategic maintenance plan. You know, we started doing that. We need to finish that process. Um, we need to reassess, you know, what those backlogs are, what the critical needs are. And uh, we had previous estimated a couple of years ago that those 600 high priority needs that we had were probably going to run us around $75,000 per profit or per project, which adds up to $45 million. And that's just the high priority stuff. And that's three and a half times the revenue that the stormwater utility brings in. So you can see it's a serious problem. Um, and so we need to reevaluate what our needs are and how we can resolve them. And part of that process is the development of a stormwater master plan. Uh, DeKalb County has never had a developed stormwater master plan. Uh, we've, we've kind of been flying by the seat of our pants, so to speak. And this year or last year, at the end of last year, we developed a request for proposal to get a stormwater master plan that can analyze and look at stormwater systems throughout the entire county, give us some prioritization, um, look at and, and coordinate with the other communities and communities within our county, uh, because drainage issues are not bounded by political boundaries. You know, they are bounded by the topography of the area and it all needs to be coordinated. So we're trying to get this, uh, this going. Uh, we have, uh, I think there were six, either five or six proposals that were received. The selection committee has gone through those and has made recommendations that have been forwarded to our purchasing and contracting department within the county. And I'm anticipating that that'll probably go before the board for approval 
uh, sometime in the next month. And then we can get going on this master plan and finally do what I believe should have been done probably 10 or 15 years ago. The other primary thing that is needed is establishment of a funding source. Um, you know, our fund, and that's going to be a part of the capital or the um, stormwater master plan as well. Uh, we also have other studies looking at what we call cost of service, just even to maintain the level of service that we are providing now, let alone what is needed and whether or not the funds that are coming in are sufficient to do that. And uh, preliminary indications are, are probably that no, it's not. Uh, so we're going to end up having to look at that. And, and part of that is looking at the current stormwater utility fee. Now, one of the other things I wanted to mention is that, you know, I've been talking about stormwater systems, pipe repairs, um, you know, all these different elements. But please realize that the stormwater program for DeKalb County includes much more than drainage ditches and pipes. Uh, we're responsible for uh, a lot of different things. Dams, for example, there are a number of dams throughout the county. Some are considered significant by the state and are regulated. Uh, we've had a contractor or a, um, an engineering firm that has reviewed some of the deficiencies that we have uh, over the past year and has indicated the need for approximately $3 million per year just to address the critical needs. And we've got many meetings uh, with the uh, state to uh, bring those things up to, up to the uh, level that they should be and the level of safety that they need to be. So that's another element that uh, you know, gets into the way, so to speak, of being able to just do pipe repair. Um, another thing that is critical is that we are responsible for compliance with the NPDES permitting process, which is National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System Permits. It's a federal program. Um, the county is, is part of that program, um, not voluntary, it's, it's mandatory. And uh, that permitting program requires us to do a number of things. And part of that is that we must inspect every catch basin, every inlet, every facility that is identified as part of the MS4 system, the municipal separate storm sewer system, uh, has to be reviewed every five years. Um, that means we need to look at all those pipes, we need to look at all those facilities, determine what deficiencies there are, and develop a program uh, that will start to address those deficiencies. That program goes beyond just inspection of pipes. We also have a program, or we're also required to look at the discharge of any pipes that go into a stream or into a river or into a receiving basin. Uh, for example, if we go through three weeks of no rain and there should be no flow going into the storm sewer system. And if we go and look at one of the outfalls of these pipes and see that there is water still coming out of that pipe, something's wrong and we're required to trace that. At the same time, if at any time, whether it's in dry weather or wet weather, we notice a sheen of oil, for example, uh, in the receiving stream coming out of a pipe or a discoloration of the water that comes during a, uh, a rainfall event, uh, that may be an indication that there is a pollutant that is entering the system. We're required to trace that and uh, find out where it came from and take steps to correct it. And that could be as simple as a homeowner changes the oil on their car, doesn't know what to do with it, so they dump it down the drain or down the inlet. And when that happens and it hits the storm sewer system, it ends up being a critical item for us that we have to go investigate. And that takes up a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of money. So that stormwater utility fee that everybody sees ends up having to pay for a heck of a lot more than just simple pipe repair. So with that, I'm going to end my, my little presentation. That's a lovely picture of a problem that we had uh, a couple of years ago with a uh, system that was within an easement. And it was a county responsibility. You can see that the pipe is shot. Um, I mean, it's completely torn apart with age. And this is the kind of things that we have to deal with as far as making repairs. So, you know, with that, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, and end my little presentation. And should you have questions, I'll do my best to answer what I can. And, uh, you know, we'll go from there. Okay. Uh, Mr. Lemke, Rick, uh, thank you very much. That was a great presentation. I uh, appreciate your time and I hope you'll stick with us for a 
some of the questions. I see we've got about six questions here in the chat, and I know that uh, my chief of staff, Tara Smith, I think has probably another half dozen uh, questions that have been emailed throughout the day or throughout the past week. Uh, before we get into that, I also just want to remind everyone, um, thank you very much for taking your time out of your evening to pay attention to this, to join our meeting. Um, um, I have a septic tank and I've had uh, septic problems at home, so it's not a stormwater problem, but it's a problem in the home when water is uh, getting back into your house and causing problems. So I, I do have some empathy for uh, what you guys are going through right now. Um, with that, uh, Tara, how about we start you with reading one of the questions that came in by email, and then I'll pick up one of the questions on the chat, and we'll just go back and forth. Uh, there was a lady, I don't know where she went, she had her hand up, <clears throat> she had a question. Is she still here, or did she log off? Because uh, there's a couple hands up in the air. Okay, I, believe, I guess maybe she lost. Hmm? I believe the first question um, that with the hand raise feature was Miss Billing. Yes, there she is. I see her. Yes, Miss Billing, if you unmute yourself. Yes, it's um, Billingsley. Billingsley, I'm sorry, Billingsley. Right. And, uh, uh, nice to meet you, Loretta. Uh, we <laughs> talked briefly, um, uh, but it's nice to meet you. And uh, um, I just want to say I know that uh, stormwater issues can be uh, can get a lot of the passions going. And, and um, just ask your questions, and we will do our best to get you to get okay. any answers. Um, so I um, am having stormwater issues of a block drain and it's a constant issue on my property. Um, and I've, I've reached out to all the um, representatives I can about it. I have yet to hear back from DeKalb County, but my question is, is I also um, uh, uh, mentioned it or you know, filed a complaint to the EPA um, since I documented it for at least six years. Uh, does that help me in any way to get some attention on getting this issue taken care of? And has the EPA levied any uh, violations against the county for storm runoff? To my knowledge, the EPA has not levied uh, penalties against the county for stormwater runoff. Um, you know, the sanitary sewer is a completely different issue. And as you well know, that uh, you know, DeKalb County is under consent decree, you know, from the EPA, you know, related to sanitary sewer. Uh, as far as stormwater, yeah, you know, I, I won't guarantee it, but uh, as far as I know, there has not been. Now, as to whether or not contacting the EPA helps the uh, process along, um, yeah, you know, to tell you the truth, I really don't know. Um, you know, I have not had the EPA contacting me personally, uh, as far as any issues. Now, I don't know if there have been communications back and forth from the EPA to some of my staff. It has not been brought to my attention. So as a result, I kind of suspect that it has not occurred. So I'm not sure how effective that is. I think the EPA is in all likelihood more concerned about the pollution aspects than they would be um, uh, aspects with uh, um, backed up water or rainwater or whatever, or, you know, or a flooding issue. You know, it's, I, I, and that's, you know, I'm kind of talking off the cuff a little bit on that, but, uh, you know, certainly, and, and you bring up another point that I think is, is very pertinent. I know that there are a lot of issues out there that are years and even decades old that, you know, have been brought to the county's attention in one form or another, or people have tried to contact the county and have been unable to get a response or have been getting a response and not the response that they want. Um, certainly that ha happens as well. And, you know, that's, that's an issue that, you know, we're trying to address, you know, I'm trying to make sure or get my department to be more responsive, but to give you an idea of the degree of difficulty we have Monday and Tuesday alone, we had over 300 calls come into our system. Yeah, and we, we don't have enough people to handle that. We don't have enough people to answer those calls. We can't pick up every phone. So a lot of those calls go to voicemail. And it may very well be weeks before you hear anything back uh, by the time we get an inspector out there to do any, uh, even, even to investigate to find out what the problem is. And if it is weeks, that even gets into a bigger problem because by that time, the funding's probably dissipated and there's nothing to see. So it's it's... It's not an easy issue, and, and certainly, I, you know, I, I'm not giving you an answer that you want to hear, but uh, as I said before, you know, it is what it is. Okay. 
All right. All right. Um, I, uh, I'll hop in on this next one. Uh, Joanna Boyles uh, is a person that I've been speaking with over, I think, since I got elected almost immediately. We were <laughs> talking about the stormwater concerns that she has. Joanna, it's nice to meet you in person. It and, is nice um, to see you. <laughs> uh, if you wouldn't mind, put your question to Mr. Lemke. He is a very knowledgeable guy. Yes, Mr. Lemke, so nice to meet you. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> My husband and I um, bought this house last fall um, for our, because we had a baby. And um, I, I did the work of, of kind of clearing the back. My hope was to put up a fence and to, lots of overgrowth. Anyway, there are two 24 inch concrete pipes in the back that go under to Old Stone Mountain Road that backs up to my house. So I did the research and I found the final subdivision plat for Heritage Manor where I live. And one of the pipes is on something called a hundred year flow drainage easement. And one of the pipes is on something called a 15 inch concrete pipe. Now, in reality, they're both like 22, 24 inch concrete pipes. Um, so I had a roads and drainage inspector actually come out and they were super helpful. And they're like, yeah, those look like ours. Like I'd be happy to, um, to flush them for you. But then they got back to the office and now I'm kind of getting crickets. <laughs> um, and so I guess my question is I've done the research. I know the codes. Um, I've got the plat. Um, I've got the pipes. I've talked to private landscapers and private plumbers and they all won't touch it because it's clearly public because it's on the plat and it goes under the road and I mean, all of that. So, uh, what's my next step, I guess, is really my question. Well, I think you've already done the steps that you need to do. The, the yeah, as, as far as what the solution is, and, and here again, I'm, we're going to get caught up in just the sheer volume of issues that the county has. Yeah. So, you know, even though you've done all the research and this may have been going on for years, you know, I can't tell you that we can jump on it and get it taken care of because there may be other issues that are in front of it. Um, as far as you know, what your next steps are, uh, I, you know, my encouragement would be keep in touch with us, and in doing so, you know, uh, just you know, give a give us a call, uh, find out where we're at with it. Um, a lot um, of, as I said, a lot of these inspectors get backed up, and by the time we get a work order written, it may be months and months before we can get back with you. Us public works or us roads and drainage because roads and drainage closed the ticket because they claim that the pipes do not exist when in both real life i've got a picture of the, the roads and drainage inspector like smiling next to the pipe and their <laughs> official word is that the pipes don't exist and um yeah they've, they've closed it because the pipes don't exist um, but the pipes are actually in real life and on the plat and i've got all the evidence <laughs> so um i guess keep in touch with public work like do i elevate it to public works then because roads and drainage has closed the issue <laughs> Well, and, and well, roads and drainage is part of my department. So, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm over top of, uh, of roads and drainage. So I would. The pipes exist. Yeah. So I, well, I'm, sure they, I'm sure they exist. Now, whether or not they exist in the county records may be a whole different story. Got but, it. Uh, none, nonetheless. They're here on county records. Got it. None, nonetheless, um, go ahead and get in touch with my office instead of Perfect. going straight to roads and drainage. Yeah. Go to the public works director. Uh, it's rwlmke at decabcounty.ga.gov. And, uh, you know, uh, certainly, you know, the uh, commissioner's uh, staff can provide that information to you. and Or, or even through a commissioner, believe me, they're not afraid to call me and let me know that uh, we've got this complaint out there. So one way or another, it'll get to me. And then I can I can try to accelerate and uh, and see if I can get some answers on it. And and much as I hate to say it, you're not alone. Yeah. Um, you know, there's no, a lot of issues like that. I get prioritization. I respect prioritization. I just um, I didn't want to accept that the pipes didn't exist because they are in real life. I got pictures and I got plats. <laughs> they exist. Yeah, and, and, uh, want to move I, forward? I, I would caution you too, as far as a lot of these plats, we do have plats that indicate that there's an easement, but it doesn't assign the easement to the county, and that gets into some legal issues. But you know, that's probably it's pretty pipe. rare. It says pipe, not easement. Okay. But but I'm happy to go the long way. Just just point me in the right direction. I will. And here again, you know that information. If you can supply that information to our office, you know I I can start to try and get people to track it down. Um, you know, here again, I'm not going to I'm not going to promise that I can give you an answer tomorrow or even next week. But uh, certainly, you know, getting it, getting it into those hands, you know, it gets it out of the area where it's a closed issue. It, you know, we'll just reopen the issue. Perfect. R W Lemke, I'll email you. And uh, thank you. For helping. Nice Joanna, to meet you. Hey, Joanna, Robert. 
if you'll uh, copy me on that email and then I uh, and and um, the email you'd sent over did not have a copy of that flat attached. So if you wouldn't mind trying to send that again or copy me on that email. I had to pay two dollars from the DeKalb County Courthouse, but I will attach it for you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Right. Uh, well, Tara, uh, you want to take the next one? Yes, I, there are a lot of questions in the chat, so I will read one of them right now. Um, how does one trace the plat to find out responsibility of property drainage system? Is that what she was just talking about? Well, generally, when that, those questions come to the um, roads drainage division and our inspectors, they will go through uh, physical uh, inspection to determine you know, where that pipe is. We'll look at our records, the ones that we have that show locations of county owned facilities. And, you know, we know that that may not be um, complete. You know, it, it, we try to keep it as complete we can, but uh, you know, there may be holes in it. That was done by a consultant years ago. And, you know, we'll go through that. And then we'll look at uh, the plats um, that we have. And, and sometimes it takes a legal uh, review to determine just uh, whether or not that's a, uh, in a public or a private domain. And, um, you know, those, you know, that's, that's essentially the process that we go through, but it's a case by case basis. So, you know, as I said before, there's no hard and fast rules that dictate that, you know, if it's, you know, it's just not black and white. It's just, uh, you know, oftentimes there's some gray areas in there that take a lot of bit of investigation. Right. And based on the age of a lot of the infrastructure, that research, that time that you need can add up uh, as you're trying to track down those old records and confirm some of the history that might be out there. So I'm. Uh, it does. Yeah. And, and, you know, certainly, you know, there's, there's so many problems out there. I mean, we've got a lot of flooding issues. We've got a lot of um, uh, pipes that, uh, you know, people uh, are unsure whether they're public or private. We're unsure whether they're public or private because the, the records just are very sketchy in many places, especially in the older neighborhoods that uh, it's often difficult to, uh, go through and determine those, you know, and, you know, we've, you know, the, the flooding that we have, um, you know, certainly we're concerned more with flooding that creates a, um, uh, a specific uh, property damage rather than a, a nuisance or unsightliness. You know, if a, if a road floods uh, by six inches, you know, to be honest with you, it's, that's not the biggest problem that we got. Um, to give you an idea of the extent of issues that we often deal with, uh, last night, we had a uh, eight foot diameter pipe um, collapse. Um, so, you know, it's it's some, you know, that that obviously becomes a priority. And that that's going to take quite a bit of effort to get resolved. Yeah. So that means you guys are moving at times into a triage mode of taking care of the immediate issues to. Yeah. And the other thing that I'd like to add in, too, is is during the time, you know, especially during a storm. Um, you know, people will call to say, you know, good grief, my yard's flooded, the road's flooded. You know, what are you going to do about it? Well, usually during those times, our crews aren't even addressing um, flooding problems or, or drainage problems. Uh, we're too busy taking care of trees that have crossed, uh, fallen down across the road. And we've got to clear that first. That's the priority is to clear those so that um, emergency vehicles can get in. And, uh, you know, when we have uh, last year and one of those storms, we had upwards of 50 trees that came down. And, uh, you know, it took weeks and weeks to catch up with all that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, next question, uh, Rick, is from Lisa Castle. Uh, what percentage of the areas that need maintenance is on a schedule as opposed to ad hoc? <sighs> The short answer is probably none, that we are still in a catch up mode and still attempting to go through and catch up with the work orders and probably will be in that same mode until such time as we have the completion of the stormwater master plan. And once that plan is adopted or in place, then that gives you a, a criteria to go through things on a priority basis. It, that will that will help give us that pri priority. Now, you know, we do know that there are certain spots throughout the county that, um, you know, are typical um, sticking points um, and, and some some of the major areas. And, and certainly before storms, if we know that there's some advance notice, we'll we'll try to um, you know, see what we can do to unclog the facilities that are you know in that area uh, in advance. So, you know, if that's a 
kind of a preventative uh, element, but it's uh, and and you know not necessarily on a specific schedule. Right. Um, I see we have a, another hand raised, but I also want us to be able to go through. I think we probably have another dozen questions, uh, Mr. Ryan. Uh, if, if you've got a quick question um, so that we can, we can uh, take care of your concern, but also answer some of these other questions. Oh, and uh, you have to unmute yourself. Yeah, oh, no, there you go. All right, thought I did, I'm sorry. Um, well, it was my question earlier about the, um, how to determine the plaque you, you know, whose responsibility was. And that actually, the answer was bright. And I really appreciate everything that you all are doing here to address all of this, but it really wasn't answering the question that I had, which was who, how does one actually find the information as the other lady has done about the plat to determine who's, Joanna, yes, um, whose responsibility it is. It, I live in Smoke Rise and all of our properties are not on pipes underground. There's drainage as um, uh, dry creeks that run through virtually every piece of property that I'm aware of through our right. neighborhood. And so I'm just concerned as to, or, or questioning whether those are the property owner's responsibility or were they um, plotted or deeded to the county since they're pretty major, mine's really large. So I. My biggest concern is really the bridges, that everyone in my neighborhood has a bridge over their, their culvert to right. get to their home. And we are all at the end of the life of those bridges. So I'm just concerned about that. That was my question, really. Um, I think based on my own experience and from what Rick has said, uh, that looking at the final plat would be the place to confirm that. Uh, the final plat, I think, would be most easily accessible um, through the uh, Superior Court Clerk's website. And I don't, I know we don't have that link. Tara, let's put that link up uh, when we have some additional information that we'll be emailing out to folks uh, later on. Uh, but that would be a place where you could uh, do the search for your subdivision uh, and then uh, uh, be able to find that final recorded plat. Uh, that would be the most easiest way. My own experience is, is they have, let's say nine, easily 90, 95% of the recorded plats some things may not be recorded there. Um, and if that is the case, reach out to my office and we can try and work with, uh, the, I think her name is, um, I forget her title, Deborah DeBerry, very nice lady. Uh, but I think she would be the person that would be in charge of those records. Uh, and we'll see if we can track things down. In, in yeah, and, and I'll add a little bit to that as well, you know, considering the description that you just gave, as far as, you know, uh, the culverts, essentially, I'm, I'm presuming you're talking about the bridges over the drainage ditches, um, servicing your driveway. Um, typically, and then, you know, I would have to go back and look at the, you know, they'll take this verbatim, but typically in the experiences that I've had in other jurisdictions, anything dealing with a, a drainage ditch uh, under a driveway is a private issue, is a homeowner issue or a homeowner responsibility, um, because that is technically it is a facility that serves your property and not necessarily the whole county. Um, and you know, I, again, that's that's kind of shooting off the cuff a little bit. That's based on the experiences that I've had in other agencies, not necessarily DeKalb, but uh, I would think that, you know, the best answer is going to be looking at that plot. Rick, we're sort of entering uh, the last 15 minutes. So I'm gonna say this is the lightning round. We'll get a couple of these questions that were put into the chat. I see, my neighbor, Mr. Phipps Hadaway, is, has joined us. So we'll see if we can squeeze him in also uh, for, a, for a quick question. Uh, this next question is from Susan R. I have neighbors channeling water from their gutter downspouts connected to pipes that sends it to a drainage ditch that then directs it to my property. From what, I, from what I've read, this is illegal. Is that true? And I will, I will go ahead and preface this by saying we probably not really in the business of giving out legal advice. Uh, I know that uh, uh, from my time as a uh, staff person up in Norcross that sometimes we would have those questions that get put up. Um, Rick, if you have a safe way to answer that, I'd, I'd turn that over to you, but otherwise I think it might be safe to say that. Well, without knowing you know, the specific details of it, uh, again, you know, probably a case-by-case -case type basis, but generally if you've got a water issue between two private properties, it is a private issue. 
And, um, you know, if your neighbor is dumping water onto your property, um, that, that really ends up being something for the civil courts rather than a public works department. All right, uh, Rick, uh, this is just a comment uh, from uh, Becky Perkins. Uh, excellent presentation. Is it available for distribution in PDF format? Uh, uh, Rick, we'll get with you and, and uh, see if we can get a copy of that to, uh, for folks, if that's all right. That's fine. Uh, Councilwoman, and I apologize, I always mess up her last name, uh, Councilwoman Noel Monfort. Oh, you did so well. I'm in the middle of a baseball game, so there's going to be a lot of screaming going on. I was just wondering if you guys had identified the critical uh, dams in the area, because we're under your stormwater agreement through the IGA. We we're actually going to talk about that on Monday. We, we do have a listing of those critical dams. Um, you know, off the top of my head, I can't repeat them now. Uh, I'm lucky if I can remember what I did last hour, let alone, you know, a list of uh, properties like that. But uh, uh, certainly, yes, the county does have a listing of those, those facilities. And are they on the recommendation for your 2022 budget for the commissioners to consider? I know you guys are working on that right now. Yeah, in, in pieces, so to speak, uh, we've uh, brought those issues to the attention of the COO uh, as far as what our needs are. We are trying to pursue grant monies uh, or GFA loans for uh, some of those repairs, but there's some limitations and obviously competition for that those funds. Thank you. And thank you so much for hosting this. This is great. Thank you for attending. I appreciate it, Councilwoman. Uh, next question is from uh, Nina Elderstein, if I pronounce your name correct. My property adjoins a creek. County employees placed a boulder on the slope, which have since fallen into the creek and blocked the opening uh, to the street. Uh, there are fallen trees, limbs, and other items which have fallen into the creek. I uh, suspect she's wondering how she can get onto uh, the schedule to uh, get those addressed. And um, Rick, I'm guessing you're saying send it a, we can send an email to your office um, and it'll get worked into the priority list. Yeah, certainly send, send that in. Um, typically, the county does not maintain creeks. You know, creeks are generally left to be in natural state. Uh, which also means that if trees fall, um, you know, they stay there because, quite frankly, we don't even have the ability to get in and take that kind of stuff out. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's an issue that the county caused, that's a whole different, whole different issue. Uh, so certainly, you know, let us know. And, you know, if it's something that we can take care of, you know, we'll let you know. If it's something that is beyond our capability or beyond our, um, our, our responsibility, uh, we'll also let you know about that as well. Okay. Uh, Rick, uh, next question is from uh, Vicki Hood. Um, is there a list by priority that can be accessed by the public to know where his or her issue falls on the list and to see when there is movement on such a list? And I think you've said uh, uh, right now the county is, is sort of working on catch up for the priorities uh, before we have uh, that list of items to work through. Yeah. Um... I know I've been concentrating more on, you know, those critical item lists and, and some of those uh, are issues that are going to demand more than, you know, just a crew out to, to make a repair. Some of those are going to require engineering, mm -hmm. construction drawings, and, and, you know, it's a lengthy um, process to do that. Um, let, let me, I'll have to get back in touch with you on that as far as um, a prioritized list, as far as a, a sequence. Uh, we have had sequences of work in the past uh, where people have said, you know, where am I on this particular list? And, you know, uh, I know we had a lot of that during the um, beginning of the COVID area where we were assigning projects to contractors and the contractors had, you know, they might have had six projects on their list and they'd be working down those uh, those projects one by one. And, and those we could tell uh, as far as an overall list that would encompass you know, either the 600 critical or the 5,000 backlog, I doubt if I've got a prioritization on that as of yet. Okay. Um, I'm going to hop down so we can get sort of towards the bottom of the questions uh, and wrap this up and be respectful of your time. Uh, Amy Carpenter, should an initial request concerning a problem be emailed or mailed to roads and drainage? I suspect that stormwater pipes is failing and would damage our home when the failure is complete. 
Um, absolutely. Uh, email is probably the, um, it's, it's my preferred method because it gives us um, a, a traceable um, record. Um, so I, I would prefer email. Um, I think sometimes that might be a little easier sometimes than the phone calls. Um, but, uh, or, or, you know, if you call the roads and drainage and quite often if all the operators are busy, you're going to get dumped into, uh, the, uh, the holding cell, so to speak. Right. And, you know, it may be a while to get back uh, from those. So certainly, uh, email would be my preference right. and, uh, I'll make sure we post that. Um, yes, I am. It, it always helps if you copy your commissioner on those emails respectfully. Right, but is uh, the, and it puts is, it on our, our list as well. Yeah, is the email where is the email posted? I guess to get to the right person at Roads and Drainage. Uh, I'll tell you what. Let us get with Rick and uh, get the specific email address that he'd have things preferred to go through, and then of course we'll also have my email address or my staff's email address as well, uh, so we can always be that follow up check for you guys. Yeah, and I'll I'll go ahead and and uh, Commissioner, I'll get that uh, to you in a. Just to you know, kind of package it up as far as email, you know, and and phone numbers and stuff like that. Uh, and then if you would distribute it, that'd be great. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so I think we've got maybe two more questions, and then we'll have a quick moment for Mr. Hadaway. Um, let's see here. We have a. This is from Stephanie Farmer. Uh, we have a 12 foot sinkhole that continues to get bigger with every rainfall, and we want to know how to get it fixed. It runs under our house. Uh, and through the cul-de-sac. Um, again, that might be one of those questions where, uh, Stephanie, if you, uh, I think we've got your email address, we'll reach out to you and see if we can get your physical address uh, and then get that over to Rick's team so we can have someone take a look at it and also take a look at those final plats and confirm uh, where it is and, and responsibility uh, for that. Yeah, that, that would be correct, Commissioner. Uh, certainly, you know, we'll, we'll take a look at that. I know you know, there's a number of those issues that occur that we know that there's a problem, but we just haven't been able to assign the resources. And certainly as the time goes on, those things get bigger and bigger. Uh, and unfortunately, you know, that's just, um, you know, it's just the limitations that we have with our resources. Mm -hmm. Understood. Uh, so this will be the final question. Um, uh, and I'll go ahead and say that anything we have not answered specifically, uh, we will get you guys answers. We have your emails and I believe Tara's recording this, so we've got the chat information as well. We'll get you guys answers. Uh, Alana Levy, hope I pronounced your name correctly. Will you be having a follow-up Zoom uh, meeting on this issue? And uh, my my hope is that we do. Uh, uh, if uh, Rick has any hair left to share with us, um, and hopefully after we've got that stormwater master plan adopted, I would love to have a follow-up. Uh, we sort of would have, I guess, from my expect expectations as a commissioner sort of know the parameters of where we're going to find the solutions. Uh, and I have a feeling we'll be relying heavily on residents as well as engineers to, uh, to, to, get, to, those, uh, to get to those answers. Um, um, Rick, I'm not gonna hold you to commitment right now, uh, but uh, in the future, if you wouldn't mind, I'd love to have, have you back again. Um, and then uh, Phipps, if you don't mind, you've got two seconds. Uh, we've got a few, only a few minutes left. Uh, I don't think we can hear you. I'll tell you what, if you put it into the chat, we'll, uh, I'll get you an answer, uh, either through, through my office or through uh, Rick's office. Um, well, listen, we're down to the last six minutes and I wanna uh, uh, follow my commitment to Rick for being respectful with his time. Um, so thank you, Rick, very much for, for your time and your patience. Uh, you are clearly very knowledgeable and your 45 years of, of uh, expertise and experience shows that. Um, I hope the residents that were here in attendance were um, at least comforted with uh, the knowledge that there are some capable, qualified people that are here and that we are working towards a plan to get this uh, ultimately resolved. Uh, the other thing I would add to my residents is, is that um, you know, this problem is pretty significant and I know that uh, at a national level, there's uh, discussions on infrastructure spending, and in particular, water has been called out as one of those items. Um, we are gonna be sending out a list of contact information for different federal elected representatives within the state of Georgia. And we would encourage you guys to reach out and, and um, 
let them know your concerns. Uh, this is something that I think is going to be larger than DeKalb County can fix on its own. And, um, and uh, I think that this is sort of the appropriate time to reach out and ask for, for a hand uh, uh, in these times. Um, at the end of the day, you know, to have a home uh, that is getting flooded out where your foundation is starting to sag or damage is starting to impact your, your roof, where your roof is leaking, those are, those are very big issues. And as Rick had said, um, a good portion of the county was built out before we had some of the stormwater emphasis in place that we do today. Um, and so really the issue becomes um, not just fixing the stormwater systems that the county is currently responsible for. You know, at some point, how do we go back and retrofit the older communities if there is a way to do that? And I think, again, this is the opportunity that we need to be uh, using to reach out to our federal representatives. Um, so again, I just want to say thank you to everyone for your time and attention coming out to this. Um, my experience in government after uh, 12, 14 years as a bureaucrat and eight years as an elected official is, is as soon as the sun's out, people tend to forget. And uh, when the next rain comes, everyone is, is fully engaged. And I, I, I beg you, please uh, stay with me on this topic. Uh, we can push this needle and, and really get some attention, I'm convinced, to, to improve our neighborhoods uh, and make investments for the future. Um, that said, uh, uh, I wish everyone a great night. I want to say thank you Commissioner, so much. Uh, Commissioner yes. Patrick. Is that, is that my good friend? It is. You know, I'm under my friend, Kathy Registers. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, she is, uh, you know, she's the district director from for uh, Congressman Hank Johnson's office. Oh, perfect. And she invited me to join. And I am so glad this is such an informative uh, town hall. And so I, I just wanted to let you know that you have my support. You have done uh, a very great job uh, since taking office. And so you've given me an idea to bring this to my district. So uh, I just want to say thank you. Uh, it was a lot of informative information, and I'm going to steal Rick from you to bring him to the field. <laughs> so thank you so much. Well, uh, and everyone I knew I was going to regret this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, everyone, in case you didn't recognize, uh, that is uh, Commissioner uh, Marita Davis Johnson from the Fifth District, and and she has uh, very good access to Congressman Hank Johnson's office. <laughs> and his home. And uh, I, I feel confident that we've got uh, another good voice on our side. So, um, uh, and, 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 and thank you. And I just want to say that I would put my video on, but I'm getting my hair done and I don't think that you all want to see me like this. So uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. I really appreciate you joining. Um, to all of our residents, thank you so much. Uh, we will be sending out a link where you can upload videos we really want to hear your stories. I know these are going to be horror stories, but we really want to hear what you have to say. Uh, and the idea is, is to package this up, ultimately get this to our federal representatives um, so that they know, you know, this, there, there's lots of crazy talk that goes out on the world right now. But at the end of the day, we're talking about protecting our neighborhoods. And that, that's not a political issue. That's a taking care of your neighbors issue, in my opinion. So um, with that, I thank you all very much. Uh, as I said, if we didn't get your questions answered from the chat, uh, we will get that taken care of. If you have additional questions after this is over, by all means, email them either to me or my staff. My email address is rjpatrick at dekalbcountyga.gov. Um, and I am honored to serve as your commissioner for District 1. Uh, and I'm also honored to have uh, the representative from District 5 join us. So with that, have a good night and we'll Thanks. continue this conversation. Thank you, Robert. Yep. Thank you, guys. Bye, Appreciate it. Good night, everybody. Yep. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.